What if the core promise you believed about ketosis, powerful epigenetic benefits from histone deacetylase inhibition, was built on a claim that didn't hold up when scientists tested it head to head? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. Today, we're examining how beta-hydroxybutyrate, or BHB, became known as an HDAC inhibitor, and why more recent evidence calls that narrative into question. I'm Alara Skye. We'll walk through the original 2012 science paper that sparked the story, the 2019 comparison that challenged it, and the practical implications if you've relied on ketosis for epigenetic effects. We'll also clarify where BHB still has legitimate value that doesn't depend on HDAC inhibition. The starting point was a widely cited paper by Shimazu and colleagues. It reported that BHB inhibited class I histone deacetylases in a dose-dependent manner at concentrations achievable during fasting or ketosis. That connected BHB to increased histone acetylation and expression of oxidative stress resistance genes, creating a tidy model for broad health benefits. The narrative took off. Researchers and influencers repeated that ketosis led to BHB, BHB inhibited HDACS, and epigenetic gains followed. The claim was appealing because HDAC inhibitors are known in oncology and immunology so a dietary route to similar effects sounded both elegant and accessible. But elegance doesn't guarantee reproducibility. A direct head-to-head -head arrived in 2019. Researchers compared BHB with butyrate, a short-chain fatty acid produced by bacterial fermentation of dietary fiber and long recognized as a strong HDAC inhibitor. Using the same assays across cell types and in vivo, they found robust HDAC inhibition with butyrate and no detectable HDAC inhibition with BHB. That comparison also highlighted divergent inflammatory profiles. In endothelial models, butyrate suppressed pro-inflammatory gene expression and cytokine release, whereas BHB was slightly pro-inflammatory in that context. The authors explicitly called for a reassessment of BHB as an HDAC inhibitor and anti-inflammatory molecule based on their data. Mechanistically, the molecules differ in meaningful ways. Butyrate shows direct epigenetic action on regulatory T cells by promoting FOXP3 expression and TREG differentiation. That pathway anchors strong anti-inflammatory effects. BHB does not induce TREGs through that route, even though both molecules can activate the GPR109A receptor. There's another layer with metabolic signaling. Butyrate extensively modulated transcription in muscle models, upregulating mitochondrial genes such as PGC1-alpha, CPT1b, and antioxidant defenses like SOD2 and catalase. Those are the kinds of changes many attributed to ketosis. The 2019 data suggest butyrate, not BHB, was driving them under the tested conditions. Now for the difficult paradox. Butyrate depends on adequate fiber intake and a healthy population of butyrate-producing microbes. Ketogenic diets often reduce fiber and, in studies, are linked with lower fecal short-chain fatty acids, including butyrate, and reduced abundance of key taxa, such as Roseburia and certain bifidobacterium species. BHB itself has also been reported to suppress bifidobacterium growth. If you pursued ketosis for HDAC-related epigenetic benefits, the evidence suggests you may not be getting HDAC inhibition from BHB. At the same time, the diet pattern can lower the production of the actual HDAC inhibitor made in your colon. That undercuts the original mechanistic selling point that circulated for years. It's important to separate that critique from areas where BHB still matters. BHB is a useful alternative fuel for the brain, heart, and muscle during glucose scarcity. It activates GPR-109A. Ketogenic diets have long-standing evidence for seizure control and refractory epilepsy. BHB can drive histone beta-hydroxybutyrylation, a distinct modification from acetylation, even if that is not HDAC inhibition. Those benefits stand on their own. 
What needs adjustment is the epigenetic narrative that framed BHB as a potent HDAC inhibitor. Claims deserve updating when higher quality comparisons and follow-up studies fail to reproduce the original finding. That's how scientific understanding advances and how guidance stays trustworthy. A practical question is whether you can simply supplement butyrate to capture its HDAC effects. Oral delivery faces a pharmacokinetic problem. Free butyrate is largely absorbed in the small intestine and does not reliably reach the colonocytes that use it. Reported systemic availability is low, and colonic delivery with standard products is limited. Workarounds such as enteric coatings, tributyrin, and butyrylated starches aim to improve delivery, but the literature still doesn't show consistent therapeutic colonic levels from commercially available options. That gap matters because the most compelling HDAC-linked effects of butyrate are local to the colon and the immune environment it shapes. There is a proposed direction. Pairing glycine with colon-targeted butyrate. The rationale is to combine direct HDAC inhibition, Treg induction, and epigenetic reprogramming from butyrate with glycine's complementary anti-inflammatory roles which NAC and G, LY, NAC does not provide. The key is targeted delivery that reaches the colon, rather than being absorbed upstream. Stepping back, the broader lesson is about claims keeping pace with evidence. The 2012 result was published in a top journal, and it's understandable that communities built on it. But persistent promotion after strong contrary data emerged has kept an outdated story alive, especially in popular discussions of keto and epigenetics. If you're evaluating ketosis today, align expectations with what's supported. Use BHB's validated roles where appropriate, and do not count on HDAC inhibition from ketosis. If your goal is HDAC-linked epigenetic change, current evidence points toward butyrate biology and the challenge of delivering it effectively to the colon. Here's today's challenge. Take 10 minutes to review why you're using or considering ketosis. If your goal was epigenetic benefits via HDAC inhibition, update your plan by separating BHB's proven benefits from the HDSE claim, and note one concrete question you'll bring to your clinician about strategies to support colonic butyrate in a targeted, evidence-aligned way. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.